அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் குட் மார்னிங் டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ ஐ வெல்கம் ஒன் அண்ட் ஆல் ஃபார் த வெபினார் ஆன் இண்டஸ்ட்ரியல் சேஃப்டி அண்ட் ஆக்குபேஷனல் ஹெல்த் ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் பை தி டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கெமிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஃபேக்கல்டி ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் அண்ட் டெக்னாலஜி அண்ணாமலை யூனிவர்சிட்டி பிஃபோர் கோயிங் டு த வெபினார் லெட் மீ ஐ வுட் லைக் டு ப்ரீஃப் அபவுட் அவர் யூனிவர்சிட்டி our annamalai university was uh, one of the oldest uh, and biggest residential university in tamil nadu uh, established in the year 1929 by the philanthropist dr raja sir annamalai chettiar and dr raja sir mutai chettiar presently the department of chemical engineering is offering a program called mtech industrial safety engineering program which is recognized by the department of labor and employment apart from the other programs uh, be chemical engineering me food and preservation technology me industrial biotechnology so i take this opportunity to uh, brief out all these things there are since there are many uh, participants from the student side nearly about uh, 250 participants from the student side it's a good opportunity for you to uh, pursue for post graduate degree in safety mtech industrial safety engineering which is which has got a very good scope and also this is recognized by the ministry of labor and employment by the government of tamil nadu so that you can become a recognized safety officer in industries okay so let now let us go to the webinar i would like to share the slide hope all of you can see the Uh, slide myself uh, professor saravanan i did my be chemical engineering me chemical engineering from anna university and specialized in industrial safety and uh, uh, did my phd in industrial safety engineering and presently i'm working as a professor in the department of chemical engineering uh, for the past 26 years i am working for uh, anna university just an overview of the program what we are going to see in this uh, webinar uh, because there are most of the students from polytechnic and engineering colleges i would like to touch some basics on the industrial hazards then what causes accident we all knew that there are a lot of accidents in the during the lockdown period also so we should know the causes of accident so that it is very uh, inform we get more uh, information and details about the accident so that it can be prevented and the recurrence can be avoided in the future then the human factors because many research say that human factors are the major causes so we are going to uh, see the uh, human factors and accidents elaborately then occupational health and finally we can discuss so already i told you let us let us see some basics we should know the two key words which are very familiar in uh, industrial safety one is uh, hazard and another is uh, risk so hazard is the one which has the potential to cause an accident including all injuries death damage to machines and the equipment and also the risk which is nothing but there are so many definitions people say the risk can be defined as taking chances against the possibilities of danger a yeah, very simple definition so once in a, once there is no hazard and risk in any industry there cannot be any accidents okay so our main objective is to eliminate the hazard and risk so these are the basic uh, definitions yeah picture which explains very clearly about what is hazard and risk in this picture you can see uh, the uh, snake is a hazard and the person who is taking a risk to uh, catch it so a yeah, very simple picture which explains the definitions for hazard and risk so there are different types of hazards we say hazards are wide and vary okay chemical hazards compression hazards noise hazards heat hazards electrical hazards biological hazards and what we see the covid 19 then radiation hazards penetration hazards harmful dust there are so many hazards are there in the industrial environment so we should know the type of hazards so that it is very easy to take necessary action to eliminate it 
so these are the common ways by which the hazards are overcome so uh, defense we say defense of five defense ways by which the hazards can be uh, eradicated the first one is the elimination the basic thing we try to eliminate the hazard that should not be even a 0.1% for the existence of the hazard so that is what elimination we try to do eliminate we try to eliminate the hazard from at the conceptual stage itself then if there is no possibility to eliminate it completely then some kind of substitution what kind of substitution can be implemented to overcome the hazard any other similar kind of materials or any other design system which can substitute the original one and which is less hazardous than the normal one so if there is any possibility of substitution we can go for that even if there is no substitution then we should go for any engineering and isolation techniques for example if there is a heavy um, high temperature heat areas we can make some engineering designs like making some uh, artificial ventilation like and the air conditioning etc okay so these are all some engineering techniques by which also we can overcome the hazards and the other way of uh, eliminating is administration by providing safe or standard operating procedures training the worker to know how the machine or how the equipment are to be operated and what are the safe practices to be followed to overcome the hazard these are all some administrative techniques and the final defense is the personal protective equipment if there is no possibility to eliminate substitute or in the no engineering design is available no administrative technique is available then finally we have to go for the personal protective equipment like we say there are two types of personal protective equipment one is a uh, 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 respiratory and another is non respiratory the common mask what we are using is a respiratory and other there are lot of canisters and uh, other personal respiratory equipment are available other than that all are non respiratory the helmet goggles ear muff ear plug uh, apron shoes all these comes under non respiratory personal protective equipment this is the final defense okay so when there is no other solution to eliminate or substitute or engineering control or administrative control then we have to go for the personal protective equipment which is highly effective in protecting the life of the workers and also we can see the effectiveness of the hazard control if you eliminate it then it's 100 person if you substitute it it is only 75% and the effort is moderate then the engineering technique it is 50% administration technique still it is there but a 25% of the it is effectiveness is 25% because nobody for many people violate the rule violate the safe operating procedures so its effectiveness is only 25% similarly the ppe is 5% because there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, chances of not using the ppe so its effectiveness is only 5% pkv so this is the effectiveness you can see how effective it is in the various techniques in the control of the hazards now we shall see the, what causes accident okay before we go for any kind of prevention measures we should know the causes for the accidents uh, one of the research says that the unsafe action of the employees are the major cause that is uh 78% and remaining the unsafe conditions they found out it is 20% like machines working without guard or other uh, unsafe conditions prevailing in the environment that is 20% and the remaining 2% we say it is natural calamities or acts of god so the majority of the accidents or majority of the causes for the accidents are uh, unsafe action okay so we have to look into the unsafe action factors what causes the people to make or commit errors in the workplace so when we see the human factors uh, we see there are three areas to uh, address one is engineering another is design and the third area is psychology which plays a major role what the job is nothing but receive as we have to sense man we call we say this as a man as a sensor man as a processor and man as a controller okay so like a computer we receive information through signals through symbols through displays etc and uh, process it and uh, coming to 
a conclusion whether it is right or wrong, whether it is more or high, whether it is less or low, say example, pressure, temperature, all parameters. So our brain processes the parameter what we see in, through the displays. Then that we have to take a control measure that is performance to eradicate the abnormal conditions. If the temperature is high, we have to reduce it. If the pressure is high, we have to reduce it or if it's and, and vice versa. Okay, so this is the job of a, a worker, receiving or sensing the uh, thing and then processing it and finally controlling it. So for this, there are many components involved in this. Apart from this, there are environmental factors, we say noise, vibration, illumination, climate or humidity and chemical substances in the environment affects the worker to in processing or in taking some control measures. Okay, like so there are so many factors involved. For example, if there is a huge noise, more than 80 decibels, then he cannot be able to assess what is happening and also it may be an annoyance for him to concentrate on the job and he can he may not be able to take a correct control measure. Likewise, the vibration, if you take, there are uh, whole body vibration and hand arm vibration like. Okay, so this vibration also disturbs the employee by in processing the issue and uh, there are possibility for accidents. Then coming to illumination. Illumination is nothing but the lighting, we say. So there are different uh, uh, level of lighting is required for the worker. We call it as a different task, uh, some normal task and special task. So uh, according to the task, they require proper lighting. Otherwise, he may not be able to see what is exactly happening. And so he may not be able to take the correct decision to control the hazard. Similarly, the climatic conditions and humidity. So high working in the high temperatures, if you take Gulf countries and all, it goes up to more than even 50 degrees Celsius. And similarly, in other uh, Western countries, the temperature goes minus 20 degree, minus 40 degree. So the once if you don't feel comfortable with the climate, you may not be able to think properly. So there are a lot of possibilities for the to take so to process the uh, what you see or what you observe from the data and uh, hence there are possibility of accident then chemical substances coming to the chemical substances there are a uh, lot of uh, poisonous and other uh, and other chemical substances other poisonous materials leakages or suffocating materials in the environment also disturbs your mind and uh, you may not be able to concentrate on the job and uh, there are possibility of disturbing to the mind in processing the uh, signal or data and you may not be able to perform better. So these are all the some of the human factors coming which we have to be addressed in the design that we are going to see in the ergonomics part. And uh, now we will move on to the uh, unsafe action factors. Okay, so the human factors, you see the uh, possibility of human factors are two parameters. One is unsafe action factors. Another is personal and psychological as well as psychosocial factors. Okay. So the unsafe action factors are totally different from the personal factors. That you cannot compare these unsafe action factors with the personal and psychological factors. Why unsafe act? Because many people, they behave uh, unsafely in the working environment. So the, that we are going to see in the behavior-based uh, safety also. So the unsafe act comes from the uh, workers. There are two possibilities for committing the unsafe act. One is errors and another is violations. Uh, error is uh, doing not doing intentionally. Okay, the, some decisions they take are skill-based errors and perceptual errors. These are some errors which are not uh, come by intention. Whereas the violations are intentional. Routinely they violate and they sometimes very exceptionally they violate to finish the job quickly. So these are all the causes for the unsafe act. One is errors and another is violations. So we should know what are the common unsafe actions of the workers. Okay, so mainly the failure to use PPE because uh, so many reasons they say why you are not uh, wearing the helmet or if you ask they say it's uh, sweating my hair is falling like because a lot of ignorance 
they do this not using the ppe that causes major accidents in industries because of the uh, failure to use ppe then operating machines without authority for some hazardous jobs you require uh, permit systems the in many industries they follow the permit systems works the safety work permit or permit to uh, work safely so this has to be obtained for before carrying out the all the hazardous jobs like working on, on electrical lines working on any pipelines even working on any uh, walls uh, like there are a lot of working on uh, moving machines etc there are permit systems are required so people uh, are not getting the proper authority and working on machines that lead to uh, accidents then making safety devices uh, inoperative so sometimes they want to finish the job quickly or they want to do, do the job in short cut methods so a make the safety devices to remove the guard or work on the machine i request all of you to please put it in mute unsafe equipment and unsafe uh, tools in for improper tools they use also leading to accidents uh, Uh, for example instead of a hammer if they use a, uh, a spanner there are possibility of uh, injury similarly instead of a chisel if they use a screw driver there can be an accident so unsafe equipment and improper tools then taking unsafe position or posture wrong posture uh, prolonged posture wrongly prolonged wrong posture in doing a job if you see the in the slide there is a person who is bending his body in a c curve and doing the welding okay so that is not a uh, safe posture so that may lead to injury then working on moving equipment then using shortcut methods these are the some of the unsafe action factors uh, distracting teasing abusing quarreling etc so many in industries we see the people they distract the other workers tease abuse and so that their concentration or focus or attention on the job uh, is diverted and there are possibility for the accidents then inexperience in the job okay so without knowing what to do properly to control a hazard or to eliminate a hazard if they take any chance and that may lead to a accident that is what inexperience then less knowledge and skill okay so whatever the competency required to do a job you should have a thorough knowledge in that particular field otherwise there are possibility of uh, uh, accidents so this is another unsafe action factor okay so it is important how we get knowledge okay so there are three sources we get knowledge one is uh, tacit knowledge and another we get through information and another is the explicit knowledge okay let us see what is explicit knowledge it is it comes only by principles already people have done lot of research and uh, it's like a thumb rule okay what is whatever it is uh, archimedes principle or uh, einstein's principle they have done lot of research and it cannot you cannot deviate from the principle like a uh, sun rises in the east okay so these are all principle procedures process if a and b uh, reacts only you get c there is no possibility of some other things so that is the explicit knowledge then the other information we get through data symbols signals facts context through like the material safety data sheet or other informations all information through all the informations we get knowledge then tacit knowledge this is just by experience okay by doing for a long time a job you may be very easily identify what kind of deviation take place or by just by experience uh, over a long period of working on such a process you may know the uh, reason for deviation or while for some kind of measure measures etc you might be knowing in the concerned field that is what tacit knowledge so all these things gives you a uh, knowledge so you have to convert you have to apply the knowledge in the work field that is what we say it as a wisdom once if you apply the knowledge then only you can succeed always when we know all we all know that smoking is injurious to health but still we are not applying our knowledge many are not applying the knowledge and to reach the wisdom similarly the now for knowledge conversion you require internalization socialization externalization and combination of all these things to reach the wisdom wisdom we say 
is in tamil it is gnanam okay so once the people with wisdom they will not commit any kind of error okay so that is what the knowledge has to be converted whatever we study whatever we practice in life that has to be converted applied in the our workplace or in the field where we are working and convert into uh, wisdom so that the human error can be completely eradicated okay now we shall see the personal factors and the psychological and psychosocial factors as well okay so the age is a parameter for many if they become uh, aging every year they get the thing i reach 50 i reach 60 okay so you should never let aging get you down it is only for the uh, mind that it you are aged okay so you should, there are many people we see in the verge of retirement they lose attention on the job they lose concentration on the job because of the uh, worry what they get after retirement what to do how to spare the time etc similarly in the youngsters also if you see the age there are many people with a lot of diversion and other factors they also not focusing on the job then health condition okay so if you don't have a good health then naturally there can be a problem in concentration of the work okay so nowadays we see there are many uh, people once if they cross 40 or 50 Uh, they, they are uh, hypertensive diabetic okay so many issues and uh, they cannot concentrate on the uh, job the fear of death arises if the health condition is not uh, well then some kind of fear of death arises and accordingly they lose focus on the job and hence accidents are taking place then home environment this is a common and most important factor so if you don't have a good home environment you cannot have a good working environment okay so that it is disturbed by the people in the home and hence you go with the same mood to the office and your performance will definitely be affected because of the mindset what we have the what you have the problem in the home okay so mostly it is affected by the spouse children parents and uh, other people living with us in the home so we should try to have a smooth home environment otherwise there are possibility for uh, losing the concentration on the job similarly the factory environment and uh, see there are a lot of conflicts and uh, uh, frustration in the working environment we see l- so many factors among the workers that leads to the uh, conflict among workers and similarly the frustration both are to be completely eradicated we see there are a lot of factors disagreement between the workers and uh, not a uh, dislike of superiors so many factors uh, leading to the conflict in the industry and accordingly they could not uh, perform better then financial position so once if you have some financial position you get very less help from the friends or relatives because everybody is having a problem with the financial position so paying the uh, interest or paying repaying the loan how it feel so many problem uh, financial position is very much affected during the lockdown now so many people are worried how to settle the home loan or how to settle the other loans they have borrowed from so many agencies banks and all so it also again uh, making you to lose concentration on the job then addiction to intoxicating substances like tobacco liquor and other uh, drugs etc they cannot uh, focus on the job okay so many people we see in the night shift they come with uh, uh, liquor and uh, many people they take time to go for smoke and all so at the time there are possibility of some deviations which may lead to an accident so and also it affects you your health and uh, subsequently you become an addict of that without that you cannot uh, work or live a yeah, situation arises and naturally your concentration is very much deviated from from the job and uh, hence leading to accidents so then reckless attitude this is more we see in the asian countries many people they want the job but they don't want to work okay so this is more than one of the survey says that more than 60% of the people are with uh, reckless attitude so you should uh, make the workers to work with interest and you should find the causes for the recklessness because of so many reasons they behave like that 
so that is the behavior based study we have to do and we have to make them to work with interest then day dreaming this is common among the youngsters people in the age group of uh, 25 to 30 there are many people think about how to spend the week uh, weekends or uh, evenings etc so thinking of that and uh, losing their attention on the job then over confidence this is we see among many even from the many experienced people the over confidence see there is a picture uh, shows the cat on the wall on the other side there is an eagle okay so you can see the uh, cat is taking a uh, over confidence to pass through the eagle okay so if there is anything happens the cat is going to fall from the wall okay the eagle will fly off nothing will happen to the eagle okay so the over confidence should always be avoided whatever the rich experience you have in the field but it cannot uh, help or may, may be a fortune to all the times okay so you should never take chances against the machine equipment so the over confidence must have to be eradicated then emotional instability we see there are people with a lot of uh, emotions uh, and good emotions bad emotions uh, happiness sorrow anger so they show this against with other workers or even sometimes it's against missionaries that may also lead to accidents and also that deviates you from the job then uh, marital status okay we see there are three status in the marital area one is a bachelor uh, spinster then married and divorcee okay so for those who are uh, uh, bachelors they want to get married those who are married uh, not uh, comfortable with the home environment and uh, if you take the divorcee their level of depression is more so that this marital status also affects the workers in the uh, performance and leading to take some kind of uh, uh, chances and uh, commit error so leading to accidents then physical problems there are many people we see uh, even uh, with some less reaction time and even some pimples in the face or very people with very obese and uh, eyes eye poor eye side they develop some kind of inferiority complex comparing with others they are fair i am black they are uh, smart lean i am obese like okay so these kind of personal physical problems also leading to that some kind of disturbance in their mind and leading to accidents so now we have seen so far what are the unsafe action factors okay so how to overcome from the unsafe action factors this is mostly Uh, based on that we saw like inexperience less knowledge and other uh, while uh, violating the rules procedures non use of ppe etc so how this can be overcome okay so we see the on job training and off job training which are very very important for the workers okay so they know what is happening actually in the machine or what is inside the machine and how it can be uh, prevented in case of any Uh, deviation or in case of any maintenance how to do that so for this the on job training they definitely directly take you to the spot and train and coach you on the various uh, working of the machine equipment and the safe operating procedures etc for this other than this the education towards safety good supervision uh, lectures posters cartoons slogans all this helps in understanding the unsafe actions suppose there is a a uh, machine which requires some kind of safety guard gates you can stick a poster near that don't go without the ppe near the machine or don't remove the guard likewise you can keep some posters or some kind of some accident already happened with the machine those posters can be provided in the area or some slogans there are many slogans reach home safely your kids need you badly like there are some sentimental slogans are there that you can write wherever in the prominent areas wherever the employees are gathering like the canteen and near the office areas etc so that they at least that helps them to understand and importance of life and they avoid the unsafe actions then also we can uh, brainstorming question sessions can be conducted Uh, simulation role playing internship training case studies can be explained all these helps in overcoming the unsafe action factors the documentary films we can show in the national safety of council national safety council has released so many uh, documentary films in regional languages for example if you take a welder who is uh, welding for years together 
without wearing a mask and goggles and he suffers from the uh, lung problem and uh, is also his eye is affected so he is uh, taking treatment for some one or two years in the hospital and finally he dies likewise this family suffers likewise there are many documentary films are available that can be shown to the workers so that they very easily understand how uh, the unsafe action are to be evaluated and the importance of safe operating procedures etc so to overcome this we have to change their uh, thinking attitude and behavior okay so so that they easily understand or change their behavior or so that their thinking will be changed and their attitude will be changed it's uh, three things we have to uh, educate them on the to overcome the uh, unsafe action factors let me check so the unsafe action factors can be completely eradicated there are lot of possibilities because it is mostly on the administrative side whereas the psychological and uh, psychosocial factors personal factors you have to uh, make their change their behavior thinking and uh, attitude so how you can change their attitude okay so first you should make them what is what is their role in the industry and what for they are all responsible okay so once if they accept their responsibility for what they are for what they have to do and uh, their role in the organization okay so uh, attitude is the one which changes everything so make them take control over their uh, values mission discipline just tell them about how important is their uh, name the recognition etc the values they uh, for the life the mission in reaching some uh, target to the industry and how discipline is important etc by which we can change that explaining the uh, their attitude can be changed okay attitude and performance cannot be separated like safety and production are two uh, sides of a coin likewise the attitude and performance are also two important sides of a human being so how to change their uh, thinking okay so first you have to make them to think why they what they can do to overcome from the uh, personal factor for example their personal factor is some say marital status okay so make them to tell them to understand this is not a now it has become a common problem for many the financial position and even reckless attitude okay so we have to tell them how it can be diffused tomorrow all the nothing is permanent in the world we all know motra mundre maradath so things can change in the near future so life will be very interesting after one or two months or one or two years likewise we have to tell them and we have to show some examples and make them to think for the future similarly the self talk okay if you think you can or you think you cannot this is a wonderful word from the henry ford okay so if you think that it is possible definitely it is possible so if you don't think uh, it is uh, possible or if they think impossible then definitely it is impossible so we have to make them to think then how to change the behavior so we can go through counseling physiotherapies psychotherapy sorry psychotherapy yoga and meditation and uh, motivation all these helps in overcoming the psychological and as well as even some personal factors first we have to identify the person who is affected with the psychological factor or personal factor that leading to accident so you can uh, organize a common counseling program once in six months in the uh, factory so that the the psychiatrist psychologist very easily they identify their problems and uh, accordingly some psychotherapists can be given some advice counseling 
which very much helps in overcoming the psychological factors then yoga meditation people say for uh, millions of years about the benefit of yoga yoga is nothing but the union of body and mind when your body and mind unites your attention increases your concentration increases you focus more on the uh, job or uh, what you do okay so this by on regular practicing of this you can feel and it and it would definitely lead to positive thinking mostly so any you get the mentality of acceptance whatever happens we have to accept it that kind of mentality comes so it, then it you, you the reach the stage what i said the wisdom arises in your mind and you become a person with good knowledge and also how to react in different situations even at the emotional situations or any kind of situations what we saw during the uh, personal and psychological factors maybe the financial position you may struggle in finance or you may have a, not a, having a smooth home environment or if people you meet conflict people or frustrating people you meet in the environment all you get a strong or a mental stability or strength to develop by regular practicing of these techniques so that you can very easily overcome the uh, personal and psychological factors then coming to motivation this is one of the important area this is a greek term called mover how to move with people okay so you have to move with people in a society so that you may live successfully without any worries or without any conflicts or frustrating among the other people or whoever you meet okay so the famous theory is called maslow's hierarchy theory okay so you, the, the theory says you have to satisfy the needs of the employees okay once if there is no need for the employee then he will focus on the job okay once if you satisfy all the needs of the employees you can expect their involvement their uh, focus their attention on the job so you have to satisfy all the needs basic needs security needs belonging needs and uh, uh, ego status then self actualization you have to make them as a uh, self actualization the stage that he feels that he is complete okay he doesn't have any need for his life so once if he needs once if he all his needs are satisfied then you can expect him 200% uh, uh, interest on the job okay so these are the various factors that uh, various ways by which we can overcome the psychological factors so mahatma one of the good saying of the mahatma gandhi ji watch your definitions they become thoughts watch your thoughts they become words watch your words they become actions okay watch your actions they become your destiny okay so we have to define from the beginning itself what we have to what we are and so that the naturally the other destiny follows you so apart from that the happiness and safety are very important if you are not safe you cannot become uh, happy so be grateful for the job what you have and this is mostly a safety philosophy i say instead of safety engineering okay because the contribution of the human factors is about uh, more than 70% the safety philosophy helps in overcoming the unsafe action factor so we have to be grateful for the job whatever we have and we have to develop friendships at to work so that the conflict frustration can be avoided then focus on your strengths instead of your weakness then realize the consequences of an accident once if an accident take place how painful it is how suffering it is for your entire life okay so once if you understand that then you will not commit errors so that is the uh, you have to understand realize the consequences of an accident so again and again you have to tell them think it could it could happen to you any accident can happen to anyone okay so we have to there are there is a say called uh, the uncertainty it is the uncertainty is the only certainty in life okay so anything may happen at any time we never thought of this covid 19 issue lockdown issue but now it's happening the entire world is suffering like okay so we have to think of safety first and then we have to focus on our job okay now we move on to the second uh, uh, topic the occupational health the many people in the industry they suffer because of uh, health issues mostly with the musculoskeletal disorders and uh, repetitive stress injuries 
so the occupational health is the uh, promotion maintenance of the highest degree of physical mental and social well being this is the definition given by the international labor organization and also the world health organization in the 1950 okay so the people health is very very important in the working environment so in the early 18th century the doctors noted that the body positions for long periods of time doing the monotonous work develops musculoskeletal disorders and in the past 20 years many people established connections between uh, job task that is uh, uh, repetitive stress injury uh, which comes through the again the monotonous of work they do in a wrong posture or in a different way of unsafe actions may involve with that uh, may affect their health and cannot perform the job properly okay this is of three areas we say one is ergonomics and another is biomechanics and the third is uh, motion economy so the ergonomics is a greek word ergon and nomos the work and law we have to do some the we have to do the work by some applying some rules okay so that is what ergonomics the scientific there is an international ergonomics association they give the definition the scientific discipline concerned with the understanding of the interactions among humans and other elements of a system whatever the system we work that we have to understand what is what to be done with the system by the human interactions and the profession that applies theory principles data and methods to designing in order to optimize human well being and overall system performance okay so it is nothing but fitting the person to the job that is what ergonomics in simple terms then biomechanics it is the study of the structure function and motion of the mechanical aspects of biological systems at any level from whole organism to the organ cells and uh, cell organelles using the methods of mechanics okay so it is mostly related to the mechanical movement of our uh, body parts the anthropometry table which helps in the biomechanics because people are of different sizes if you take uh, asian countries people will be with average height and if you take western countries their height are more than 6 feet similarly their uh, body structure weight etc changes from place to place okay so whatever the people short people they cannot do the other tall people doing some jobs fitting fitting some uh, materials into the rack like example okay so the biomechanics has to be applied in overcoming the msds and rsis then motion economy okay it is the analysis of the basic hand arm body movements arrangements of the workplace and design of tools and equipment to reduce the stress and injury of the workers very simple i can say so your machine is uh, in a near you but it switches but the operating switch or operating control system is say some uh, away from uh, 10 feet or 15 feet then you have to walk and come back so that makes you fatigue if you do that for uh, several times it may lead to fatigue and uh, and hence your uh, efficiency decreases that is what motion economy there are so many terribly concept is there even in searching some tool you spend more time and your performance is reduced so these are the three areas we have to look into uh, avoid looking for avoiding the musculoskeletal disorders and the repetitive repetitive stress injuries so the main objectives of this ergonomics is greater ease of using between interface and machine then avoiding errors and mistakes greater comfort and satisfaction in use of the equipment reduce stress and fatigue greater efficiency and productivity safer operation and zero accidents and injuries okay so mainly the interface and machine using use has become very easy if you apply the ergonomic design okay so uh, our spinal column is of three parts we say it as a cervical near the neck area and thoracic the back area and lumbar the pelvic area okay so these are the three areas which very much affected in the work place due to so many jobs okay so the there are some principles which need to be applied in the ergonomics the first principle is keep your body in neutral position okay so keep your body in the neutral position without bending 
uh, or uh, extending your arm, leg, etc. Okay, so it should be a neutral position. See in the picture, you can see the first position is bending his neck and doing a job. So a prolonged uh, uh, ears to the if they if they do the job like this, they get the cervical problem. So with the, now they have changed the height of the machine and adjusted. That is what uh, the principle we have to apply in the design. Keep the hip straight. Okay, so this is another important problem. Many people do the C curve, V curve in the workplace to do some job. Okay, so this uh, stress directly goes to the spinal cord and the uh, uh, lumbar area and the possibility of disc prolapse, etc. When you do this job in a similar posture for a long time. Then keep elbows about. When always we should see the elbows should be below our uh, chest level. Okay, so you can see that uh, picture from the illustration. You can see the how it is modified from the original. Earlier it was there and now it was changed to the uh, below his arm, elbows are reduced so that he can do it comfortably. Then wrists in neutral. Similarly, you can see many people nowadays using the different type of tools uh, they are using. So the neutral position is very, very important. So yeah, now in the support, yeah, support is given to the thumb, you can see in the picture, which reduces the stress that goes to the thumb. Then the second principle is uh, reduce excessive force. So while pulling and pushing, excessive force is applied to the neck area or hip area that affects the uh, muscles, bones, and uh, sure, uh, you can take it for sure. If he does this for more than one or two years, definitely he get a musculoskeletal disorder. So the invert again, inverted V curve, C curve, and the excess force must be avoided. So while taking a carrying a box like this by applying the force on the bottom of the box you become very fatigued and stress is uh, applied to the wrist area okay so if you put a holder to the box and change the design then it helps to overcome the stress that uh, generates from the uh, wrist that applied to the wrist then the third principle is keep everything in easy reach okay so we have to make them all that required materials available in the easy reach okay so otherwise you have to stretch your arm or stretch your back which may lead to injury these are some of the area where they uh, reaching safely the design is now a safe design so that without any extending his arm or leg he is reaching the box so work at proper heights okay so many people Nowadays, we see a lot of uh, the chairs, tables have come for adjustable to uh, adjust to their heights. So, which helps many, many people, uh, they are tall or short without normal height. So, they can adjust themselves the stool or table or chair or even the machine, etc. And, uh, and they can perform better. The reduce excessive motions. Okay, so in the job, the motion. The principle to think about the number of motions you make throughout a day is very much matters. Okay, so uh, holding on a uh, driller for an entire day or holding on a tool for a long time that up, that more stress is applied to your uh, palm, wrist, and uh, the entire hand feels the uh, vibration and get injured. Then the principle sixth principle is uh, minimize fatigue and static load. Okay, so we have to minimize the static load which is in your hand. Okay, so here you see uh, on the left hand side, he is keeping the uh, material on the left hand side and doing some work on with the right hand. Okay, so going on keeping the material on the left hand side is a static load. Okay, instead of that, if you fix it in a machine, it becomes easier for, for him to do the job. That is what I explained in the uh, right side picture. Similarly, other uh, holding your arms yeah, and doing some work in the ceiling or uh, now it is adjusted. 
then the seventh principle is pressure points okay so our palm uh, wrist or uh, pressure points so that has to be taken into account while doing the ergonomic design so it should not uh, uh, give stress to the palm thumb and to the palm wrist you can see in the pictures on the yeah thumb a yeah, support to the thumb helps the pressure point from its uh, uh, injury and also the arm which is rested in a table is now a yeah, slant support is given so that it becomes easy for him to keep his hand and do the job then clearance okay so whenever people say uh, pushing some materials and all that it should the height should be less he should be able to see what is in front of him so that you can uh, move the trolley or vehicle without any disturbance otherwise he has to stretch his body and see what is in front of the uh, material or trolley so the, now you can see in the bottom picture how he is stressed while seeing the uh, way similarly the other person on the top picture how he feels difficult he is bending his knee and also his hip is uh, uh, stressed head everything so the clearance is very very important in making the ergonomics design then frequently they have to move exercise and stretch like this so that it helps from the uh stress and strain applied to the various joints bones etc the 10th principle is maintain a comfortable environment okay so the environment is very very important the noise vibration lighting and glare etc okay so the noise uh, even people say the annoyance annoyance comes then uh, even it leads to uh, uh, hearing loss then also even now people have found out that it affects the digestive systems and also uh, it affects the nervous system cns the centralized nervous system is also now affected they found out so the noise should be uh, kept below the uh, permitted level say 80 decibels in an 8 hour duty so we have to frequently check the noise level and also the vibration and the lighting and glare poor lighting and also over lighting leads to glare glare which may he it affects their eye uh, vision and also leading stress to see the material or symbol or whatever it is then principle 11 make displays and controls more understandable okay so whatever signal they see it should be very prominent and able to understand easily so in the, in the road signal we see uh, red yellow green which are very prominent even from a distance of uh, Uh, say some uh, 700 meters 800 meters we can clearly see the displays likewise all the displays in the industry or factory and accordingly they process the uh, they sense and process the uh, parameter so they need to see very clearly what is the display and what it indicates etc then improve work organization so all these things have to be made as an organization a yeah, setup is required and you have to organize everything by applying these principles and you have to design and in day to day uh, working environment you have to uh, force them tell them to follow the work organized organized work in following the principles so the main applications of ergonomics is mostly it uh, the musculoskeletal problems are very much reduced repetitive stress injuries are avoided more safety for workers functional performance is enhanced then uh, comfortable and uh, friendly environment which uh, makes which is very very important uh, to move with people then accident avoids accidents and injuries then mainly the stress and fatigue free conditions for workers these are the various applications of uh, ergonomics let us some uh, let me summary uh, summarize what uh, what we have seen so far we have seen the uh, causes of accidents unsafe action factors personal factors uh, psychological and psychosocial factors and uh, techniques to control how to control those uh, hazards from the elimination substitution engineering controls administrative controls ppe then ways to eliminate the unsafe action factors and also how to manage because 100% we cannot eliminate the personal or psychological factors but we can manage through 
some techniques like yoga, meditation, psychotherapies, counseling, etc. That's what we have seen. Then finally, the ergonomics and uh, importance. So now let me unmute so that you can. Uh, You can, if you have uh, any questions. Uh, good morning, Mr. Saranan, sir. I am Raj Sundar from yeah, Qatar. How are you, sir? Yeah, fine. Uh, actually, a couple of questions I've got. Like, uh, you, you, first of all, I would like to thank for inviting me and a very good present, excellent presentation. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm into oil and gas. Mm. Uh, I'm involved in design also. One mm. of the things like uh, the, this ergonomy study, mm. Mm. has to be considered during the design stage. How can we incorporate it in the design stage, the ergonomic study? Yeah, so, we have to see what are all the machines that are going to be operated and what kind of trouble the people will uh, anticipate, trouble that may arise while operating the machine or equipment. Many things are very common if you say climate and humidity, you know already what is the temperature and also you can take those kind of artificial ventilation or cooling systems can be provided. Similarly, if you face with the noise, you can make some uh, acoustic systems to minimize the noise or you can isolate the equipment and the design, design itself or you can provide some cover, etc. so that you can minimize the noise. So coming to the body movement also, you can think of what is the load they are going to carry from one place to another or what type of material they have to use or push or pull. Those things can be, and already you, may, you will come across in the design. Okay, so accordingly, you can uh, take some, there are ergonomics available, so you can discuss with them, and you can design uh, very easily. Once if you uh, 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 identify the problem. Sir, any standard checklist or procedures available, sir? Yeah, the, the checklist is the principle what we have seen, no? The same principle has to be applied. These are the 10 common, 12 common principles that need to be applied in the ergonomics. Once if you apply these 12 principles, there is no possibility of any uh, musculoskeletal disorder issues or repetitive stress injuries. That's true. Ah, thanks a lot, sir. Because this is one of the key issues you addressed very nicely. Okay, because thanks. many, many work, uh, I mean, workforce facing this problem recently. So thanks okay. for uh, highlighting this. Sir. Thanks thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Uh, so, morning, this is Prabhaka from Pondicherry. Yes, please. Uh, like in the recent past, we have been hearing a lot of uh, uh, disastral accidents in, in NLC, NG polymers and all that. Mm. So how do you see that? Uh, uh, how, how do you see these uh, disasters and how do you, uh, what, what is your expert uh, suggestions to prevent all these? See, so far, the people are investigating on this and the exact cause was not found, I think. So once if the cause is found, then we can suggest, but most of the human, many industries, uh, many accidents are caused by the human factors. Okay, so still the, we don't have any artificial intelligence or IoT uh, technology to solve uh, industrial issues, especially with the machine and the equipment. Okay, some chemical reactors or boilers and all, we need to physically stand and uh, look what is, the, what, is, uh, what is actually happening with the parameters, maybe the pressure, temperature, etc. So, and also people maybe in the lockdown, I think maybe some kind of uh, depression or uh, some other human factors, what we have seen, no personal factors, etc. in many industries, that could be even a disturbance for them and uh, some kind of negligence uh, could lead to accidents. But uh, we have, once if the cause is found, we can tell very clearly. But once okay, you... Understand. If you eradicate these measures before you start in, starting the plan, we see many accidents in the lockdown during the startup of the plant. So they were rush, rushing to finish, uh, rushing to start the job quickly, and uh, they want the production uh, immediately. So they violate some safety rules and regulations, and that's also a cause for uh, accidents, I think, in the uh, Baisag issue and some other uh, uh, industries. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Yeah, Jay Kishan morning. here from Vadodara. Yeah, please. Sir, how can we 
combine human factor engineering during the job stage so we can minimize the cost of the project yeah now even the job study human job is also now included okay so the behavior based is one of the area that also now people including in the job study human job okay so who are on the machine whether he is completely trained or whether he is skilled enough to uh, skill and competent enough to operate the machine what was his training and how frequently he used he has to do the uh, problem uh, how he uh, frequently he has to uh, come the the deviation may come all these things are to be a uh, very clearly told him and trained in that field so we are including human hazab also now in the hazab study so do we have any guideline for that yeah the common hazab study there are general guidelines are followed no specifically for human hazab yeah the behavior based the concern people has to be verified for any kind of uh, uh, personal factors if he is involved or any kind of if he is not properly trained he is not supposed to be uh, employed on that particular job so we have to verify and we have to very clearly find out whether he is skilled enough or skillful or competent enough to do the job for that we have to include in the hazab study for carrying out the hazab they will do all these things okay sir okay thank you and sir any other questions uh, anybody yeah yes yeah, uh, i would like to just share the information which i have about the standards mm-hmm. of human factor engineering to other friends so that they can use actually shell dep has several standard about human factor engineering uh, for uh, i can say control room design mm-hmm. then they have the one shell dep regarding the wall criticality how wall is aligned into the construction the pipeline at what height it should be located how it, it should be located so that it can be easily accessible so mm. this information is available in shell dep anybody yeah. can refer that yeah it's already there we have to bring it to the uh, implementation while design itself we have to bring it that all kind of principles and whatever the recommendations by the ergonomics the international ergonomics association they have given very clearly the guidelines for the working environment including design of machines equipment everything so that has to be applied yes sir ah mr saravanan sorry to interrupt this is the one i was asking for it you yeah. said that the international association of ergonomics right yeah. so can you please uh, this is the one i was asking for hmm. so can you please share something sir uh, that material yeah i will share thank you sir thank you sir yeah, they, there are they even publish a journal ergonomics journals are coming so if you go through those journals you will come to know the advanced designs have come play in place for the uh, ergonomic ergonomic issues that you can very well understand once if you go through those journals thanks a lot sir please uh, share that uh, okay, info sir if you don't mind thank, thanks a lot sir thank you and sir about uh, that lg incident the official report just yesterday is published just for information i am sharing with all hmm. yeah that everybody has hello hello yeah hello good morning sir how are you sir good morning fine yes yeah, sir this uh, lg incident actually we see the report yesterday they sent the report in the group they yeah, yeah. suspend the they suspend the inspector of uh, factories and uh, uh, they found that uh, design the design yeah. of the tank was not uh, competent with the competent with the, the stand yeah actually they had two tank See, your voice is not clear not audible yes all no. the facility and other tank don't have they mentioned in 2018 uh, third party third party audit uh, report it said that they have 
Hello, your voice is not audible. Yes, yes, sir. Now it is clear, sir. Now yeah, it is clear, me. sir. Yeah, tell me. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Yes, go ahead. clear, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. They they had two tank and one tank. They have all these uh, requirements, but another tank they don't have any. The they they have the uh, what the complaints was less. And in two thousand eighteen report, they mentioned. See, it was very clear. But they but didn't the, follow the, the hazard. Yeah, it was very clear yeah. in the report. It was a yeah. design fault, and they yes. advised to go for a hazard study by in two thousand eighteen itself. I think so. Yeah, they have yeah. not gone through that. So nowadays yes, people say even the unsafe conditions also also human errors because of not taking proper steps. Okay, so they nowadays they say hundred percent all the accidents are human factors. So once we don't take even uh, proper necessary steps by the management or even not proper design is followed, then it is also a human error. So yes, we sir. will yeah. So the frequently we have to do the ASAP study and also we have to go for. Uh, Uh, audit every year we have to do audit and we have to update the latest technologies and implement in the industry so that it can all accidents can be prevented we should not yes, stop sir. doing the azop study or whatever it is just in once in a five years or six years we have to go for uh, many other things uh, have come so that has to be carried out properly so that the accidents can be eliminated yes sir yes sir thank, thank you sir thank you sir thank you. Anybody else? Sir, one last question from my side. Yeah, please. Sir, mainly the client which are from UK, mainly they are going to do the human factor engineering while designing. Mm. While the other location client, they are not mm. preferring. Yeah. Mm. Is there any reason behind that? Yeah, mere 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 ignorance. Yeah, they don't give much importance to the ergonomics. Okay, like how we neglect many people neglect safety. Similarly, economics also very much uh, uh, neglected. Uh, yes, sir. I support this. Actually, this is one of the issue we are coming out. So most of the engineering companies are not considering this during the design stage. Mm. So some uh, kind of uh, no awareness should be initiated. Yeah, your view is uh, your view is correct. They don't give more importance at the time of conceptual stage. Exactly, exactly. Very This is the one uh, we are. Uh, I mean, uh, another reason for asking that question is that so correct, during the correct. design stage, uh, they are not considering most of the you know, some awareness should be initiated among the engineering contractors as well. Actually, correct. Yeah, in future it may come. Yes, sir. Uh, as a HSC, we can do the risk assessment. We can go through the. can go through the like uh, the vulnerable who, who vulnerable groups who have the major uh, health risk you go and go through the medical reports yeah. and musculoskeletal uh, diseases and what they have the changes after joining the company mm. so from that you can find what kind of the most vulnerable thing they are getting from the occupational uh, the due to the ergonomic issue so mm. from that we can uh, we can easily address this issue we mm. don't want to go very big uh, ergonomic assessment or this one uh, very easy is that make a risk assessment select the groups go for the health health history study and physically verify the people uh, what kind of health issues they have because very close why nobody report in the medical uh, history nobody reporting okay. like some of the diseases like uh, skin related issues nobody is reporting so when you go with medical report and physical verification with the people easily we know what is the disease they get yes. and from that we can develop the system uh, the ergonomics in the sense uh, we need to address the disease we need to avoid the people getting disease that is the main main theme yeah uh, bringing sophistication is second but uh, avoiding them to get to the health related issues exactly yes sir yeah. this is my recommendation yeah yes, thank you thank you thank you thank you okay thank you i think with this i we can sir, uh, yeah tell me uh, do you have any guideline for human factor engineering to implement in the design stage if you have any please share with us sir yeah you just note down there is a book called human factors engineering by mccormick 
மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் வைஸ் சான்சலர் ரிஜிஸ்டார் அண்ட் ஹெட் ஆஃப் தி டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கெமிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஃபார் பர்மிட்டிங் மீ டு ஆர்கனைஸ் த வெபினார் அண்ட் தேங்க் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ ஃபார் யுவர் பேஷன்ஸ் லிசனிங் அண்ட் ஜாயினிங் தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் தேங்க் யூ சார் தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ சார் தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ